The Z drive is a striped RAID array, otherwise known as RAID 0. The C drive is my M.2 solid state drive. These are two Apple ProRes video files. I'm going to drop and drag them to the C drive. You can see that it's not quite one full gigabyte per second, 0.9 gigabytes per second. Some of you might be thinking that the RAID array is the bottleneck. It's actually the solid state drive that is the bottleneck. You can tell the solid state drive is getting work pretty hard where the RAID array is not. All these Z drives are the RAID array, but the C drive is really getting pegged. The speed slowed down a little bit, but once again, it's because of the solid state drive, not because of the RAID array. And let's get the clock back up. The file transfers started at 644. So it's basically 52 seconds for that to transfer over. If we click on this file, it is 22.6 gigabytes. If we click on this file, we can tell that it's 21.8 gigabytes. The file transfer was in between 44 and 45 gigabytes. In about 52 seconds, I'm going to round off to 45,000 megabytes. And then I'm going to divide it by 52 for the 52 seconds. We end up with 865 megabytes per second. And that seems pretty accurate. Keep in mind, the M.2 solid state drive was the bottleneck, not the mechanical hard drives. I want to go to the speed test software by Blackmagic Design. We're going to select the target drive. I've got my C drive. I'm going to start the test. There is nothing exciting about watching benchmarks. And everybody can tell how inadequate this particular piece of software is. We're going to now switch to the Z drive. And I have hard drive test. We're going to hit select and I'm going to hit start. And this is what happens a lot of times when people use mechanical hard drives. These tests are totally inaccurate. This won't give you any indication of how many video streams of red codec you'll be able to play back or ProRes or B-RAW files. The AJA benchmarking software isn't much better. The video files for this sequence are on the Z drive. All the video files that are bluish purple are 12K B-RAW. All the video files that are blue are 4K ProRes. As you notice, if I click on this, we can tell it's scaled 140%. Even scaling them 140% doesn't make them take up the full screen. That's how much resolution you have when you're using a 12K sequence. I've got the playback set to 1 8 resolution. I'm going to scrub this timeline really quick to show people that I can scrub multiple layers of 4K ProRes with ease. I'm going to make the screen huge really quick. I'm going to go back to home and let me hit play. And you can tell that the video is playing back just fine. Everything looks really crisp and clean. If you watch this on YouTube, it may look like it's dropping frames, but I can tell you it is not. If I make it smaller, everything still looks crisp and clean, but I want people to be able to see the CPU and GPU usage. The hard drive is at 50%. The CPU and the GPU aren't getting stressed all that much either. I am wondering if any of you are surprised at the performance of the mechanical hard drives striped in a RAID array. I have an i9-9900K and an RTX 2070 with 32 gigs of RAM. It would be best to have 64 gigabytes of RAM if you're trying to play back multiple layers because Premiere Pro and other software can cache out like 14, 15 frames in advance. I should mention that if your camera uses H.264 video files, those are pretty small and getting more RAM may not be beneficial.
I am now scrubbing the 12k BRAW files. The RAID system is more than fast enough. I use an M.2 to SATA adapter. You can get them for $30. To build a computer with a hard drive system similar to mine would only cost about $330. Some of the external solutions are more expensive than others. Some of them work well, some of them not so much. Same could be said about using a NAS. This unit at $900 does not come with any hard drives. You are paying $900 for the enclosure. A lot of these type of devices do not come with the hard drives. I hope after watching this video, people can understand why I still like using my old retro style computer case in the year 2025.